So again, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is a two part series. And so the first part is, are we living in a simulation? So, and this is part of AQ Adaptive Intelligence, which is our group, Thinking Thursdays. And I am your host, Gabriel Cassetta. So, the Toltec believed that life is a dream. So the Toltec was an, was an ancient uh, tribe in uh, South America. And uh, so they believe that life is a dream and that we're always dreaming, even when we're awake. We are starring in our own movie and we're following a script that we write ourselves. And all those around us are starring in their own movie based on their concepts of the world. So there was a book written by a man named Philip K. Dick uh, called Exogenesis, where he talked a bit about the, the blending of simulation hypothesis, like, you know, are we living like in the matrix type situation? and a lot of the modern day science that we have now today. So that's a very interesting read. I'd highly recommend it to you guys. Another really good book to check out is called Tom Campbell's My Big Toe. He was a NASA physicist and author. And no, the book is not actually about his toe and, it, and its size. Uh, it actually stands for his Big Theory of Everything, which is T-O-E, Big Theory of Everything, which, which it com combines spiritual aspects again with the uh, metaphysical and physical meaning like quantum physics and its effects of consciousness on matter and how we've we've been shown that through scientific exp experiments uh, chiefly the uh, the double slit experiment and also the uh, quantum eraser experiments as well which basically is very trippy if you look into it so part of Part of the reason why I started investigating this is because there's a lot of things that don't really seem to make sense when you, when you combine it with science, or if you were to leave science and religion apart, it doesn't make sense. But if you actually put them together with uh, quantum physics, his, uh, Joseph Campbell's ideas of his big theory of everything would actually put those together in a way that makes sense. So if, say, we are living in some sort of simulated universe and then you could have things like quantum entanglement make sense in quantum physics you could have the placebo effect make sense out of body experiences make sense lucid dreaming shamanism uh you know you could even say past lives could make sense anything paranormal like ghosts or you know all these things that science can't really grasp yet might actually be on the realm of science and even beyond that so Elon Musk, I'm sure everybody knows about him. He believes that the chances that we're living in base reality, which is actual reality, is very, very slim. So he pretty much thinks that we do live in a simulation. And there's lots of talks of, of him giving why he believes that. Because if you think of technology, and, and if you were to assume that there's any rate of improvement in technology, you know, consider that you know, 30, 40 years ago, 40, 30 years ago, the best we had was something like Pong, which was two lines and a dot bouncing up and down. And now we have 3D, VR, you know, virtual reality headsets that basically make you feel like you're in this whole nother world. So that's a huge leap. So if you were to assume that, you know, technology were to improve even 1% in the next year, if you compound that with time, it would be ridiculous. Like technology would make it so that we wouldn't be able to tell the difference if we're living in actual reality or a simulation. There's a really famous talk, uh, it was at the Isaac Asimov memorial uh, talk, where Neil deGrasse Tyson, as you can see his face right here, he was very unhappy because uh, this other scientist here, and I, I forget his name, I'll look, I'll look him up again later, but basically he convinced him that we are living in a simulation and it's not just a simulation, he actually found code within reality that is exactly a particular type of code, which is the same coding that's used in the Google search engine. So that kind of blew Neil deGrasse Tyson's mind. And it's really funny if you watch that interview to, uh, to see him have his mind blown. He really, he's very uh, emotive in that, in that talk. So if we are living in a simulation, there's a lot of weird rules that we kind of go by, but we're all kind of living in our own little simulated world. 
the best example I can think of is actually one of the best simulations, which would be a video game. So in a video game, you're basically an avatar and you're walking around this world with your list of things to do and, and your goals. And if you think of it as like an online video game where you can combine lots of players together, that, that, that lends to a very interesting scenario because that's kind of how our reality works. I mean, we're all kind of doing our own thing and we all have our own goals, but then so does everybody else. And we're just kind of like going through these different motions, you know, going on, you know, quests, which is like going to work to get money, which would be like, you know, whatever currency is in any video game. And then we have our challenges and obstacles. Of course, we don't have any dragons, which is a shame, but, <laughs> um, who knows, you know, we might have some kind of like alien life form somewhere in our universe and not know about it. So very interesting concept to think about. Uh, so going back to quantum physics, uh, one of the reasons that really gives validity to this whole idea of that we're kind of in a, in a simulation of some sort is in quantum physics, when you look at a light particle or a photon, you, it's, it's difficult to tell if it's just the particle or if it's a wave function. And you don't really know what it's doing until you look at it. So the very act of looking at it will influence the result. So if you're not looking at it, you'll see a wave patterning happening, which basically is every possible possibility happening when you're not looking at something. But then when you look at it, you'll get a patterning of just a particle. So that means you by looking collapse the wave function. You literally render reality which is very similar to when you're in a video game and you're walking around you know if you were to see a tree on the right hand side if you were to turn left that tree would disappear from your line of sight but what's really going on in the computer is that it's just being unrendered but if you look back to it it'll render it again because the computer knows where your line of focus is. So this idea actually really spooked out Albert Einstein. And actually a lot of things in quantum physics spooked him out. That's why he struggled to accept it for the longest time. Um, but there were a lot of other physicists that were able to come to terms with that. So if what we look at affects things, just like in a video game, how would we not know or how would we know if we are or are not in a simulation? And again, I use the MMORPG example of, you know, you're this little avatar in your, in your own life. You know, you're walking around, you're doing these things. But sometimes when you look in the mirror, it's like, is that all I am? Surely there's more. You know, I'm not just some avatar or am I? Am I more than just this little character called, insert your name here? Is it possible that we are living in a simulation? And is it possible if we are living in a simulation, are we actually, is actual reality somewhere in the future? So are we living in the future right now? That's a very interesting idea to think about, especially if we consider that you know, technology has been improving. And if it continues to improve, we might actually be in the future, not know it. And then maybe one day we'll just wake up and realize, hey, that was a pretty cool game that we just played and we thought it was our lives. Very interesting ideas to think about. <laughs>